Now I have enough pieces to graph this guy, right? Let's do it in exactly the same way I went from 0 to 360, okay? I'm going to do that on this new set of axes here. And you can see I've marked out the dots for all of those 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 45 degrees. I've marked them all out, but you can see I've only marked in, I've only labeled every second one. I just don't want my diagram to be too busy. Sometimes a diagram gets just, there's so much stuff on there, you're like, I can't even read this thing anymore. So I want to put enough there to be informative, but I don't want to overload it with information. Okay? Now, you remember that the range of sine x was from negative 1 to 1. And that's because that's the range of the circle, right? The unit circle is from negative 1 to 1. Well, you're getting the exact same thing for cosine, right? Because it only goes from negative 1 to 1. So I'm going to have the same range here, negative 1 to 1. Okay? Let's go around the circle. You can see the order I'm going to go in. I'm going to start from 0. I'm going to go up to 45, 90, 135, all the way around. And I'm just going to read off these values and plot them on my graph. Okay. So for instance, the first one, cos of 0 is 1. Cos of 45 is about 0.7. So you look at like where halfway is, and then you go a bit further up. Something like that. Cos of 90 is 0. 135. <coughs> Okay, how many of you guys did dot to dot as a kid, right? I've got enough coordinates. You can almost even see the path that it traces out, okay? Carefully, maybe lightly in pencil if you're not that confident to draw it smoothly, and then firm up when, you, when you've got a better idea. Join up these dots, okay? What shape are we going to get? Upside down bell curve. Ah, very interesting. Now, we do have something that at least superficially does resemble an upside down bell curve. There are some differences between them, but you know, you're getting the general idea. Have a look at what we've got. Starts at 1, goes down to negative 1, and then it finishes back at 1. Okay. Now just for a second, compare. Remember all these things to note from sine, right? Smooth curve, same deal. Stationary points, same deal, except in this case we can actually see three of them. Do you see the three? There's two high ones, and then there's a low one, right? Uh, they're not semicircles. Again, when you pop points, you can see. It's still periodic every 360 degrees. It's going to repeat. Once I get to here, I'm going back around the circle again. So if you wanted to, you could continue this guy in both directions. Right? And lastly, the range is still negative 1 to 1. All these things we said about sine, they apply to cosine. Okay? What's the difference, though? If you look hard, you stare really hard, and in fact, if you, um, if you can see, right, remember how I drew these dotted lines to show it actually continues, right? Let me just draw some dotted lines here, stop it there, and then I'm going to hide this. Do you recognize this graph? Yeah. This, this is sine, isn't it? This is exactly sine. We just drew him over there with one difference. What's the difference between this graph and that graph? Yeah, that's right. That guy starts at zero, right? But this guy starts up the top. Uh, if you like, he's kind of been moved over. I moved him over nine degrees. You see that? Nine degrees, okay? Which, honestly, we shouldn't be surprised by, because what does cosine mean? Remember, cos, there's a, comp there's a, there's a abbreviation there. It stands for complement, right? So from that definition, we said this, do you remember? Think back. Yeah. We wrote this thing down, yeah? We wrote this guy down. Now, again, I was a bit sneaky, right? You remember I asked you to draw two parabolas at the beginning of the day, right? Two parabolas. You drew y equals x squared. Everyone knows what that looks like. How would you describe verbally what the difference is between this guy 
and this guy? And the answer is, it's the same guy, just moved over a little bit, right? The difference between this and this is it's been moved over exactly two units. You see that? Now you have a look at this. What's the difference between these two? Answer, it's been moved over exactly 90 degrees. It's the same shape, right? All of the features are identical, but it's been moved over. We call this, we have a technical phrase for it. We call it phase shifted, right? Um, anyone who does electronics knows about phase and signals and that kind of thing? Yes? Um, do we know which side it moves to? Ah, that's a great question. Which direction does it look like it goes to you? Hmm. So for example, if I were to take this shape, right, and I want to end up with this shape, I'm going to have to move 90 degrees to the left, aren't I? Right, because this spot here, which used to be at zero, is, I guess is going to be at minus 90. So it's, it's gone this way, 90 degrees. Okay? Now in the tunic course, you get more used to the idea of you can move to the left, you can move to the right, you can move any combination <laughs> of different distances. Okay? In this particular example, he's gone 90 degrees to the so left. So is it usually to the left? Or um, it, it depends, and this is something that gets explored next year. It depends on what's in here. Right? I can change this and I can make it move to the right. I can change it, I can make it move to the left in exactly the same way that I can do it with parabolas, right? For example, if I wanted to move this guy to the left, I'd write this. This is exactly the same as this, but instead of having a root at the origin, it'll have it at negative 2, which is to the left, okay? 